Stand up and please welcome Elise Tarango. Thank you, Pedro. <gasps> All right. There it is. Perfect. Hello. Hello. Oh, there I am. Hi, guys. Hi, online. I heard I could see you guys up here. I see Bonnie, June, Carrie Hicks. Hi. So good to see you guys and in person. So good to be with you guys as well. But uh, my husband and I were the founders of Prophetic Heart Healing. It's a prophetic inner healing movement. And we are on a mission to see the world healed one heart at a time. And uh, yeah, and today I wanna talk about the growing mental health crisis and the incredible harvest that's before us as believers to take a $375 billion industry for the kingdom of God. And you know, one of my favorite scriptures is the kingdom, of vi- the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. And the Greek word for violence is biazo, which is the root from which we get biology or the study of life. So violence in this verse is referring to lively, thriving, accelerating life. And so in other words, this verse is saying that the kingdom of heaven is alive and well, and it is forcefully advancing. And so, my friends, I'm here today to tell you that the kingdom is advancing in the mental health industry, and I believe that we have found the absolute best, most radical healing solution, and that is Christ-centered inner healing. And I believe that there is a way to do it as your life's assignment be actually able to support yourself in the process. And so I wanna start by telling you guys about, uh, about a guy named Chris. So Chris was one of my first high profile inner healing clients, you'll see him here in a minute. I can't tell you guys his real name or show you his picture, but to give you an idea of what kind of guy Chris is, he was EY's Entrepreneur of the Year, he's a New York Times best-selling author, and literally worth hundreds of millions. And when I sat down with Chris, you know, he starts telling me his story. There's all this trauma and pain from his childhood. And he starts talking about how he had been on this spiritual journey. He had tried all these different religions and rituals in this hunt to find the real thing. And nothing had worked. So he was like, well, I'll try this. Let's give it a try. And so I was excited, you know, I I love a session where someone does not know what's about to happen to them, right? I'm like, ooh, this is gonna be fun. And so I'm telling him, you know, awesome, Chris, well, this is about connecting with Jesus. And I believe that when he comes, he brings breakthrough and he brings freedom. And if you are okay with just talking to Jesus today, nobody else, we can dive in. And so he agrees, you know, and we, we start praying, and at first he's not seeing or sensing much. If you guys have ever been to inner healing session, you know, we ask the Lord questions, and we listen for his response. And in this moment, it's just like radio silence. And you guys ever have those times where you're expecting the Lord to show up, and he takes like a little bit longer than you want him to? Anyone know what I'm talking about? So I'm there, you know, like, I got my prayer hands. I'm like, come on, Lord, come on, Lord. And I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden, Chris goes, well, I see a big eye. And I'm like, hmm, I'm not sure if that's the Lord, because every time I've seen him, he has two eyes. So I'm waiting there, like, okay, Lord, where, where are we going from here? And all of a sudden, Chris goes, oh, well, now I see Jesus. Yeah, he's leading me away from the eyes, taking me somewhere. It looks like, a, looks like a throne room. And I'm waiting in this moment as Jesus ushers in his presence, and he starts encountering Chris's heart. 
And you know, I remember asking, Chris, I'm, I'm curious, is there anyone in this throne room? And he says, yeah, there's a lot of people, but there's someone in the front. And as I wait, you know, Chris, this man of influence and impact, this multi-millionaire, just starts bawling. And he says, I think it's God. I think it's God. And Chris went on to have the most incredible encounter with the Father, you know, where God spoke identity and love into him. He actually gave his life to the Lord in that session. I got to pray with his entire team. It was one of my favorite testimonies. And, you know, Chris had tried it all, but his healing came from the Lord. True healing can only come from the healer. You know, it doesn't matter who you are, what you've done, or how much money you have, how many books you've written. At the top of the mountain, Chris found that every real heart matter can only be solved by the healer. And I believe, guys, that the world is desperate for healing. We live in one of the most heartbroken, lonely, anxiety-filled times in history. You know, if you turn on the news, this is what you will see. You know, one in eight people in the world suffers with a mental health disorder. That's 970 million people. They say that every 11 minutes, someone takes their life. In 2019, there were 301 million people living with an anxiety disorder and another 280 living with depression. This is all pre-COVID, so we know that's gone up. Prescription drug abuse is the nation's fastest growing drug problem and has been categorized as an epidemic by the CDC. We're calling the next global pandemic the mental health issue. And these numbers are staggering, right? So where do people go to find solutions to this? Well, these are some of the top ones. The psychology and counseling industry is a $74.6 billion industry. The behavioral therapy market size is $143.7 billion. The psychic service market I'm sorry, the psychiatrist market is an estimated 23.9 billion, and the global mental disorder drug market is valued at 36.77. Can we get that up on the screen so they can see that? Now, these are just the clinical solutions. What about alternative methods to healing? Let's look at that. You know, the psychic service industry, which includes the occult, includes witches, psychics, Reiki, tarot card readers, is a $2.3 billion industry with nearly 100,000 psychics nationwide. You know, I was reading that to to meet with a witch or a psychic. It's about a 40-minute session. It costs on the low end between $200 and $350 for that session. And what they will do is they will tell you your future, and they will cast a spell on you for 40 minutes for $350. You know what that tells me? It tells me that the world is hungry for healing. They're hungry for an encounter. And so what are we seeing here? We are seeing millions of people around the world who are hurting, they're struggling, their hearts are breaking, and they are being fed solutions that do not heal. Do you guys know that the uh, success rate of therapy in the United States is 50 to 75%? So if you go in for therapy, there is a 50, 50% chance that it's going to help. And of that successful outcome, what they found, what that categorized as, is now they could cope with the issue that they had. That was success. So whether through drugs or through therapy, they could now live with the issues that they had. 
Now, quick side note right here. I'm going to get into my story here in a minute, but I studied psychology. I have a huge respect for therapists. I know a lot of inner healing, spirit-filled therapists. But therapy outside of the spirit of the Lord will not heal you, right? And so I want to share Jesus' plan for eradicating mental illness, his plan for healing and deliverance. And it's Isaiah 61.1. It says, the, spirit, the mighty spirit of Yahweh is wrapped around me because Yahweh has anointed me as a messenger to preach good news to the poor. He sent me to heal the wounds of the brokenhearted, to tell the captives, you are free, and to tell prisoners, be free from your darkness. You know, one session in particular in our, uh, in our prophetic heart healing community a girl was literally about to take her life. She had gotten it all ready, was planning to commit suicide. And as one last ditch effort, she decided to come in for an inner healing session. And so she meets with one of my facilitators. Uh, the facilitator does not know any of this. They go through the entire session. The girl has this radical encounter with the Lord. And at the end of the session, she starts telling the facilitator, you know, I was, I was planning to, to commit suicide after this call. But I'm not going to do it. I'm going to throw it all away. And as facilitators, you know, we're mandated reporters. So if someone is a threat to themselves or someone else, you know, we have a duty to report it. And so my student director gets on the call with her, tells her, you know, hey, I'm going to go ahead and call 911. Why don't you just unlock your front door so they can come in? But in the meantime, let's just keep praying. Let's keep encountering the Lord. And I, I want to read this to you guys. It's so good. This is from the facilitator. She said, So while we were going through the session, the paramedics and police arrived. They entered quietly and signaled for me to keep going. As the session progressed, they came up behind the receiver and put their hands on her shoulders. She relaxed and said, I feel Jesus. They all look at each other quite astonished. These are the police and paramedics, right? No idea what's going on. They all look at each other quite astonished. As the session progressed, they were each having their own encounter with the Lord. It was so sweet and powerful. After the session, the paramedics led her out. The two police officers stayed behind and asked, what is this? The 911 operator was on the phone crying, saying that Jesus took over the 911 channel and there were no calls that came in during that session, which never happens in their county, ever. Yeah. Yeah. This is the kind of healing, guys, that is available in Jesus. And sometimes it's radical like this. Sometimes he shows up, you know, and it just... Woo! Gets the police. Right? And sometimes it's simple. Sometimes it's the Lord just sitting with someone and grieving. Sometimes it's the Lord revealing truth to the areas of our hearts that are bound up in lies. You know, I have facilitated thousands of these sessions, and there's not a single one where the Lord did not show up and move and heal, not a single one. And this is really what we as Prophetic Heart Healing were commissioned to do. You know, we have conducted over 18,000 inner healing sessions. We have trained thousands of people in our inner healing modality. Uh, we've been translated into five languages, our core inner healing uh, process. And we are on a mission to see heart healers raised up in every industry, in every neighborhood, in every town, that this truly would become the most available, effective solution for healing for a hurting world. But I want to pause right here because uh, it did not start this way. You know, I, I was not born with this, uh, this vision. I really came into inner healing because uh, I was a hot mess. And so I needed inner healing first and foremost for my own heart. So uh, this is uh, little Elise. Pulled out the childhood photos for you guys. This is uh, little Elise. I was about six years old. 
And I grew up knowing who the Lord was, but, uh, but never actually encountered him. You know, my understanding of the Lord was really based in fear. It's lots of do's and don'ts and rules and all of that. And my underlying belief was that uh, God was angry with me, right? Always looking at my life through a magnifying glass. And as I went into college, you know, I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. And so I settled on psychology. I decided, well, I'm a good listener. Maybe I'll be a good therapist. And so I start going to church in college, give my life to the Lord, uh, really start understanding God's nature and character. But at the same time, there was still lots of pain that I struggled with and lies that I was believing about myself and the Lord underneath it all. I still believed subconsciously that he was an angry God right? And so a mentor referred me to an inner healing ministry in town, and honestly, I was skeptical. I already went to a great church. I had amazing friends and community. I had a relationship with the Lord. And I remember thinking, you know, maybe I should just pray and worship more, be up here on the carpet, and that will help me, right? Maybe if I just try a little harder, I don't need this. But the truth was, I was still a mess. I was still struggling. And so I decided to go in and give it a try. And when I went in to receive and really allow the Lord and the facilitator to take me deeper than I could take myself, I found incredible breakthrough. You know, I like to say that when I gave my life to the Lord, I met Jesus. But in an inner healing session, I met the Father right? The true Father. And there is nothing like meeting the love of the Father, right? You guys are, amen. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And in that session, you know, he healed that understanding of of the goodness of the Father. He brought such a radical transformation to that area of my heart, you know. I encountered Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. And, you know, I, I often get the question, well, Elise, where is inner healing in the Bible? You know, I don't see Jesus going around doing inner healing sessions. And I would argue that inner healing is actually happening all over Scripture. The Word reveals how deeply Jesus cares about the things of the heart. You know, healing in the Bible is mentioned 150 times, many of which use that word rapha, which means to heal, to mend, and to make whole. So is Jesus going around doing 60-minute inner healing sessions? No. Because he, Jesus was healing manifest, right? When they encountered Jesus in Scripture, they encountered healing himself. The sweet spot of an inner healing session is him, right? He's the healing. And so I encountered the healer, and it changed my whole life. And I started to ask, you know, if this is who the Lord is, why did no one tell me? And also, if this is who he is and what he can do in my heart, I need to tell everyone I know. I got to help them encounter the healer. And so I remember I asked my facilitator, I was like, can you train me? I, I have to learn how to do this. And he didn't have capacity. He, you know, wasn't taking on students, so he couldn't do it. I started asking my professors in school, you know, is there some kind of counseling that's led by Holy Spirit? You know, if he's the healer, shouldn't he be leading therapy sessions? But every time I asked, I was met with red tape and protocol and why that did not happen in traditional therapy sessions. And I remember feeling discouraged. It felt like the thing I knew I was made to do was just beyond my reach. And so as I kept going through college, you know, I was looking for my calling in every major, in every class. You know, where could I get a degree on encounters with Jesus? I thought about being, going to religious studies, but I didn't want to be a pastor. I thought about doing teaching, but I didn't want to teach people about God. I wanted them to encounter him. And the more I looked for my place, the more discouraged I became. And so I started reaching out to different churches, you know, and asking, hey, do you guys have some kind of training? But lo and behold, most churches didn't even know what this was. 
let alone have a training that I could come to. I started to ask, you know, if this healing strategy is so effective, like radically changed my life, guys. If I had more time, I would park there for a while. But if this was so effective, why was it so hard to find? You know, what I found was that if a church even had an inner healing team, it was a three to six month waiting list and a team of two sweet old ladies that were volunteering their time, right? They couldn't do it all day. And so the waiting list was long. And God started, started to speak to me, you know, sometimes the thing you long to do doesn't exist because you are called to pioneer it. And so I finished out college with this, uh, this dream in my heart. You know, I, I just knew there had to be a way to do this. I just hadn't found it yet. And a year or so later, I, uh, the Lord called me to move to San Francisco I supernaturally got connected with a woman there who had an inner healing ministry, and the Lord gave her a powerful word that people were going to start to come out of the woodwork to be trained up in it, like radical, met her on the side of the road, and she starts telling me this. And so it was the Lord. I jumped in with two feet, and I stayed there for a number of years. And as I was learning and growing in inner healing, you know, I was finding that I loved the prophetic, the more I was in these sessions praying with people, uh, the more gold I would see about them, and I would have a very hard time not telling them. And the inner healing model that I learned, you know, it wasn't really a prophetic model, so there wasn't really space for that. But my team was awesome, and they were like, Elias, this isn't really, you know, where we're trained in, this isn't really our specialty. Go find someone who will teach you about the prophetic. And so I did. And the Lord led me to this, uh, this wild, crazy prophet man who was always shaking his head. And he started mentoring me. And I started learning what it looks like to flow with Holy Spirit in everything. You know, I found my discernment was going deeper. My authority was rising. And I was getting sharper in my prophetic. And it really started to impact how I led in her healing sessions. I was less dependent on a method that I had learned and much more dependent on Holy Spirit. Where I'd been trained to go in steps in order, you know, A, B, C, D. All of a sudden I'm going D, Z, B, A, as the Holy Spirit was leading. And I was seeing these incredible breakthroughs. And this really was the birth of our prophetic heart healing modality. And I absolutely loved it. But at the same time, I was still working a full-time job. I was nannying 10 hours a day, trying to make ends meet, and then running to inner healing sessions before and after work. And I remember I asked my mentors, you know, I want to do this as my life. Like, how could I do this as a career? And they said, well, you could raise support. Because that was the only way any of us had seen it done. And so I started doing that. You know, I sent out... Letters, calls, texts, snail mail, the whole thing. Hundreds of people. And with all this hard work, I thought that for sure, I was going to be at least able to cover my rent. I was like, man, for sure, I can just pay my rent, right? You guys know how much support I got? Great guesses, a little more than zero. $50, $50, which let me tell you, does not cover your rent in one of the most expensive cities in the world. Again, we're in San Francisco. But the Lord was quietly speaking to my heart in this time. He was saying, Elise, there's a better way. And so I started asking the Lord for strategy. You know, I, I knew I wanted to do this with my whole life. And I just knew there had to be a way to do it that did not put me below poverty level or stuck in a job that ate up all my time and energy. So around this time, I met a, another guy named Pedro Dale. And when I met Pedro, I really knew nothing about entrepreneurship, let alone thinking that I was one. Inner healing was still my end game. I just didn't know how I was gonna get there. And Pedro would say, Elise, I think you're an entrepreneur. 
And I'd say, thank you so much. I think I'm more of a minister. <laughs> See, I had this skill of inner healing, but I didn't yet have the revelation of how to truly impact the world with my kingdom assignment. The revelation that I needed was that I was wrong in my thinking, that going all in for God was killing me, killing myself in a job I wasn't passionate about, in order to donate any extra time I had to helping people heal for free. Does anyone see how that's like a little upside down, right? But being around Pedro and other entrepreneurs, you know, my mindset started to shift. I started to think like, wow, well, what if there was a way I could really do this, do this as my job? Think of how much impact I could have if I could do this full time. And you know, I had this dream in my heart, but there was a bunch of limiting beliefs that I had to overcome. You know, thoughts like, well, all ministry should be free. Freely receive, freely give. Jesus never charged for healing, so why should I? And I had to start to unpack for myself what the Lord says about these things. And you know what I found, guys, now leading this and helping people walk through this, is a lot of us, we hold these underneath. We can be saying yes, amen, but when it gets time to actually charge and put yourself out there, we're still stuck in these beliefs. And so it's okay if I just hit on these real fast, guys, because if any of us are carrying these beliefs over the truth of what the Lord says, we're not going to flip an industry. You guys know why no one knows about inner healing, in my personal opinion? because no one has the guts to charge for it. Think about it, you know, how do we get the word out about things we care about? How'd you guys all come to this conference? Advertisements, ads, marketing, emails. Let me tell you, that stuff is not free. It costs Pedro and Suzette roughly $100 million to get you all here, rough estimate. It takes resources to get the word out, right? And so if we aren't charging, we don't have those resources, and people don't have the opportunity to hear about our solution. But you know who does have resources? Big Pharma. The psychic service industry, clearly. So if we're going to flip the mental health industry, guys, we need resources. So let's just unpack this real fast. I'm going to do this piece quickly. I know this is one of Pedro's least favorite words, but I want to talk for just a minute about ministry. <laughs> ministry. So the word ministry, even though, you know, we think it has everything to do with church and fellowship and Jesus, you know, ministry at its core means to administrate and to be of service. Has anyone ever been to Europe before? What do they have in Europe? A lot of things, good food, yes. A minister of agriculture, a minister of finance, a minister of education, right? More of those. So these are positions of government that execute administratively the tasks that will serve the nation. And so when we think about the origin and the intent of the word ministry, if you are helping anyone with anything, you are ministering to them. So your dentist, ministering to you. The lady at the checkout counter, ministering to you. The DoorDash guy, we can all believe he is ministering to you, right? Now would any of us feel right not to pay these people? Think about it. If you went into work one day and your boss was like, Shelly, thank you so much for all your work this last month, but we're just not going to pay you. We will take up a love offering for you. <laughs> but I mean, you got this job for free, so we would quit, right? Yet why do we expect that those who give their time, their energy, and their effort to helping us heal, not be paid. It makes no sense. So let's look at real fast, uh, 1 Corinthians 9. There's lots of good stuff in here. 
but a few pieces of this I want to highlight. Verse 4, don't we as ministers of Christ have the right to be supported financially? Of course we do. Skipping to verse 7, who serves in the military at his own expense? Who plants a vineyard and does not enjoy the grapes for himself? Elise's version, who door dashes for free? He gives a few more examples here, and then he says, am I merely giving you my own opinions, or does the Torah teach the same things? For it is written in the law of Moses that you should never put a muzzle over the mouth of an ox when he is treading out the grain. What is he saying? He's saying, don't be cheap. He's saying, even an animal who helps you with your harvest should be compensated for their work. Paul goes on and says, tell me, is God only talking about oxen here? Doesn't he also give us this principle so that we don't withhold support from his workers? In the same way, the Lord has commanded that those who make known Christ or proclaim the gospel receive their living by the gospel. This is the Bible, guys. And when I started to unpack this with the Lord, I was like, holy cow, he's not against it. He's actually for it, right? And I had to learn that some people are not going to understand why you're doing what you're doing. Some people won't value it. But for those who see the value in investing in their own heart, they'll, they'll pay. And they'll see it as a worthy exchange. And so I had to find those people. And so I stepped out in faith. You know, I started sharing online that I was going to offer inner healing sessions. I'd never done it paid before. I honestly didn't know if anyone was going to buy them. And... The first time I got a paid inner healing client, you know, and I remember that when the money hit my bank account, this feeling of joy and excitement, because this represented the freedom and purpose that I had been looking for for so long. And my calendar started to fill up. You know, I was surprised that people had no problem paying for something they valued. There were times that I would have five, six, seven sessions in a day. I'd watch my bank account go from 150 to 300 to 1,000 in one day of praying with people. And it quickly got to the point where I just didn't have enough time. You know, I'm turning people away. And I was seeing this incredible need for inner healing ministers. And as I was praying with people, you know, they'd start to say, Elise, can you train me? I want to learn how to do this too. And I was seeing this, uh, this opportunity to connect hurting hearts with healers, to raise up heart healing ministers who were equipped, they were healthy, and release them to uh, help people heal all over the world and support themselves in the process. See, we need heart healers that uh, don't just do this you know, full-time, or excuse me, don't just volunteer, but can do this part-time, full-time, 20, 30, 40 hours a week. And so we had this vision of uh, raising up inner healing ministers who ministered online. They can meet with you anytime, anywhere. There was no waiting list. And they charged money. And so we started training inner healing ministers in our prophetic heart healing modality in 2020. And uh, it has been an incredible journey, and we are just getting started. And God has given us a vision, yeah, a vision of this movement of healers being like the Red Cross to the world, where we can be the hands and feet of the healer to a hurting world. And, you know, guys, this is just my story. You know, my husband and I, we're two people. There are people and places that you can reach, that you can go that we cannot. And so you might be asking yourself, you know, why me? Why now? Well, I would pose the question of what is it costing you to not step into this? You know, picture this. Picture that you taught your kids how to process their emotions with Jesus, how to find their identity in him, versus letting the world define them. That might change some stuff. What if as a business leader or even an employee, you prioritized heart healing on your team that it brought unity and wholeness instead of striving to your workplace? 
What if your local church family had tools to actually help people heal? You know, raise your hand if you know someone who needs inner healing. You can raise two if you also. We can all have two hands up. Yes, hundreds of us, all of us, right? And so what would the world look like if we each stepped into this at some capacity? You know, maybe it's just a couple hours a week, part-time or full-time. What if it's just having these tool sets, this tool set in your pocket? You know, biblically, we are all called to be ministers of reconciliation. So no matter what industry you're in, your life is intended to reconcile people back to God. So every single one of us is called to this to some degree or another. But for some of us, this might be your purpose. You might be listening to me right now, and your heart is burning. The way mine was when I first experienced in our healing. And there's something called convergence. It's the intersection of where your passions, your greatest gifts or strengths are placed in a vehicle that can actually pay you and become your life's work. You know, some of us guys, we're trying to make money, but without purpose. That's like how I was, you know, stuck in this job I wasn't passionate about. Maybe you're good at it but it's merely paying the bills and your heart is somewhere else. But what if I told you there is a way to walk in your purpose, to use the skills and the gifts that God has given you and get paid for it? And I believe that for many of you, this may be your convergence. So how can I actually do this? You know, what can this look like? Maybe you're like, Elise, this sounds awesome, but I don't know if I want to start a business. How do I actually take these tools and use them? Well, a couple ideas. Maybe you want to do it as a hobby. Maybe you're a mom or parent who wants to help their kids go deeper in connection with the Lord. You know, we have lots of mamas come into our uh, community who just want to see their kids walk in connection with the Lord. Think about how that would transform your family. I want to uh, introduce you guys to Carrie here. Carrie is a stay-at-home mama. Carrie came into our uh, certification program, and I make them practice. So I teach you something, then you go find someone to practice with. Well, Carrie looked around, and she found her four-year-old. And she's like, Clay, it's you and me. So she starts practicing on Clay. Clay starts seeing Jesus everywhere. He's like, Mom, when I grow up, I want to be a heart healer like you. And so then Clay goes and starts praying with his friends. They start encountering Jesus. He's four years old. (laughs) So then Carrie started a homeschool uh, mama's group. She homeschools all their kids and uh, started doing inner healing with the mamas. Clay is doing inner healing with the kids. (laughs) You could do it as a nonprofit or for free. You could do the donation model. Now again, you guys heard my story. I tried that model. Did not work out too well for me. But maybe you're a wizard at fundraising, or you're going to print money with Ram and Jeff. So then this might be the path to take. Okay? So this is Benedict. So, uh, so Benedict uh, serves her pastoral team. She started, uh, you know, she just was an intercessor for them. She came into our course. She starts praying with them. The whole pastoral team starts getting healed. So what they found was as Benedict is meeting with the, uh, the pastoral team, it's changing the messages. The pastor is getting healed, and it starts affecting their entire 800-person congregation. They all start getting heart healing from the leadership at the top getting their heart healed. Maybe you want to do it as a business, maybe whether full-time or part-time. Maybe you want to get your own clients, create your own brand, your own business. Well, this is Kyle. Kyle is in tech in San Francisco and loves it, loves his job, feels called there, also feels called to inner healing. So he started ministering inner healing on the side of his tech job. And uh, you can see what Kyle's been able to do. Kyle's done 7,000 
as his side job. He started paying off his startup business costs. He actually had an unexpected surgery. He paid for the entire thing with inner healing sessions. Uh, Kyle now partners with a business uh, tech, Christian tech group. He does monthly inner healing sessions for them. These are a bunch of techie guys encountering the Lord every month. Kyle's in there praying with them. Kyle also is seeing a lot of favor in his city. He lives in uh, the heart of San Francisco. He connected with the police department, offered them inner healing sessions. Now he's a chaplain with the SFPD, ministers to the whole, uh, the whole squad. Uh, maybe you're a business owner or uh, you know, a naturopathic doctor, a therapist, somebody with an already established business, and you either want to bring inner healing into your team or want to add additional services to something you already offer. Well, this is Bianca. Bianca has made uh, over six figures. She's a naturopathic doctor. She's made over six figures in inner healing sessions alone just by including that, offering that in her naturopathic uh, practice. She also works with other businesses to uh, help walk their teams through healing and wholeness. And she's done over a thousand inner healing sessions since becoming certified. 